Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Today, our guest again is Camille Pauly. She is the co founder and president of Healing the Culture. Please go visit this website. It's called healingtheculture.com. And we certainly, it was very, I mean, Camille is very knowledgeable on this. She's been in it for a really long time. And our culture, the formation of our minds, how we think, our critical thinking, what we believe, what we value, how are we articulating that? How are we defending that? How, what do we believe about that? And some of us are informed and we have to be reformed and yeah. not to, we have to change the mindset of what the world is teaching and we have to put on the mindset of what, what does God yeah. say and how we do that well. Yeah, what's coming to me is something that St. John Paul II wrote, maybe in Love and Responsibility. He talked about the rehabilitation of chastity. Mm -hmm. And I said, what the heck, what's, he, what's the rehabilitation of chastity? Does it need rehabilitating? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't need rehabilitating, but in the culture it needs to be rehabilitated right. because people have a different idea about chastity, whatever it is. And I think that's what Healing the Culture, HealingTheCulture.com is doing and Camille and, and Father Spitzer. We don't want to look at these people and listen to them, and especially with Father Spitzer and, oh, God, is he a genius? Oh, it's really, I'm glad he's on our side. He's our toughest guy, he's gonna fight. It, oh, these people are about, we want to equip you to do the ministry. We want to equip you to save your grandchildren and your children. God saves, but to be articulate, to let the grace of God land in you, to be sensitive to where to land the plane, what argument and when and how to do that, that, that maybe you know, God's grace will come, well, God's grace always wants to come, and maybe somebody's eyes would be open. Well, I, I want to just say, Brother John prayed a prayer um, this morning or the other morning. John, and no, Brother John, when oh, he Brother was reading John, the yes. morning prayers in the Mass, and it said, you know, uh, heal our country from the sin of abortion. <laughs> but then all the ills of our culture that lead us to abortion, right? Yeah. Because we're not formed properly and we believe that abortion is a right. And so we really have to pray. We have to back that up with knowledge and information and in our forming mm. that we would know what we know and we would do and, what we know. Uh, well, Camille Pauly is here to help us be more fully formed because we should not be afraid to share the gospel of life. They should be afraid to share the bad mm. news of death and euthanasia and assisted suicide and abortion and on and on and on. Don't ever be afraid to share the truth and to share it in love. We'll be right back, don't go away. home with Jim and Joy and today our guest again is Camille Pauly. She is the co-founder and the president of Healing the Culture. Please go to this great website healingtheculture.com. I believe that we always are learning. <laughs> There's, we don't know everything and so especially when I converted and became a Catholic there was so much I didn't know and we're const I feel like I was constantly in kindergarten. Go to healingtheculture.com and learn. Now, we had you on yesterday and you were so yes. wonderful. Oh. And you <laughs> shared about Healing the Culture and the beautiful pro-life mission that Healing the Culture does. Why don't you recap sure. that so, for our family? Father Robert Spitzer is our founder. I founded the organization with him um, several years ago, back in 2003, because our movement needs a philosophical element. So what we do is we teach what he calls the four levels of happiness yeah to help people see a deeper sense of meaning. Mm -hmm. So we move people from physical pleasure to ego gratification, to gift of self in love and service, to surrender to God's unconditional love. And we help people see those lower two levels of happiness really force you into a narrow and destructive view and mentality on what success means, quality of life, love, the interpretation of suffering. 
and that when they move to level three and four, they have such a healthier notion of those words, a very Catholic definition of mm -hmm. those words. And then we take that, and once people have moved into level three and four, which about 80% of pro-choicers who go through our curriculum will move to level three and four afterwards, mm -hmm. um, then we can open the door to pro-life principles, okay. principles of logic, like um, you know the definition of a, a human person, objective truth, non-contradiction, um, principles of ethics like do no harm, yeah. the ends don't justify the means, yeah. and principles of, of justice like inalienable rights and that hierarchy of rights, mm -hmm. that life takes priority over liberty yeah. because it's necessary for liberty's existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole beautiful philosophy, first of the human person and then of our <coughs> cultural response in justice and ethics that helps people see this is why you're pro-life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just because the baby looks cute in a picture. Right. It's because there's this whole meaning of life behind it mm -hmm. that we're being sold a bill of goods on by the culture, which is causing us to radically underlive our lives. Mm -hmm. And the pro-life movement's got something here. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said a really important thing. Yeah. Who wants to underlive their life? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody wants to underlive their life. So that's why we need to know why we need to allow God, the Holy Spirit, the one who made us, to form us and going to healingtheculture.com is certainly because people say, well, I don't even think about those things. Yeah, I mean, it's all about me, but mm -hmm. at the end of your life, it's kind of like, is that all there is? You're right. We're not reflective in no. this culture about the most important things. Yeah. Right. What do I mean by love? And what do I mean by happy? And what is mm -hmm. freedom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about these things and we need to yeah. because our culture is selling our kids and us and our elderly people a bill of goods about what those things mean and it isn't true. Mm -hmm. What they're telling us about love and what love means and it's all about affirmation and love me and tolerating one another and give me what I want and make me feel good, that's not love. Mm -hmm. And it leads to the person self-destructing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I'm learning as I get older is that I thought people who aren't holding the positions that you're speaking about in terms of service being higher than ego and so on and, mm -hmm. and that ultimate level of, of knowing God, of truth, that everybody was in rebellion. But I've learned that 80% to maybe 85, 90 that we're speaking to at our center are not in rebellion. They're ignorant in the best sense know. of that. Mm -hmm. You don't know, you don't have it. And a lot of times, you know, when you're sharing what you're sharing, however we're gonna share that with them, I mean, some lights begin to go off. They've never heard it before. And we always say, if we can have the conversation, so we thank God for the people that support our, our center. And so we have girls coming who want abortions, but we're a pro-life center. Um, if we could just have the conversation, we win the conversation 80% of the time with people who are coming in for abortions, we win it. But if we don't have the conversation, and they're just out in the world having that conversation, sure. or they're going to Planned Parenthood, we lose it all the time. Sure. So it's not they're so much, hungry. it's not even mm -hmm. so much that they're really hard, they've never heard the other side of this. Yeah, and what it means for you, you're chance. thinking about you, let me tell you what happens to you when you give your life away. You find your life, you find mm -hmm. happiness. But who's saying that? Yeah. Nobody trusts them enough with that kind of noble information. And we don't trust our youth. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday we were talking about a lot of the programs that we have for older uh, people, college kids and, and adults and even high school kids, but we don't trust our younger kids with this and we should. Now I'm not talking about talking about abortion with yeah. a five-year-old, mm -hmm. I would never mm -hmm. do that. You know, that's for something much later. But young kids can understand these levels of happiness and mm -hmm. they can make a choice for the higher levels. Mm -hmm. They can understand some of these principles of logic. Okay. They can be quite logical and understand it. And. Uh, and so that's where we went next. I want to talk about that today. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you want to talk about Philo and Sophie. Philo and Sophie. So tell us about so, them. Okay. So this was many years in the making, and I was meeting with the superintendent of Catholic instruction at the Archdiocese of Seattle once, probably about 10 years ago. And I wanted to introduce them to our high school curriculum, Principles and Choices. And they were looking at me very excited. And then one of them said, well, what have you got for kids? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, principles and choices. And they said, no, 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 mm. I mean little kids. And I was like, you want me to do <coughs> Spitzer for kindergartners? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? And they were like, yes, you need to start younger. So we spent about five years think tanking it, researching it, um, studying it, and we came up with a concept called Philo and Sophie. The idea hit me actually on an airplane when I was trying to think, how do you teach Spitzer's you know, principles of non-contradiction mm -hmm. and the intrinsic dignity of the person and the ends don't justify the means to a little kid? 
And I said, well, obviously, you need puppets. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you need a penguin. So we came <laughs> up with a penguin mm -hmm. called Philo. And if you have a penguin, you've got to have a, a mermaid. Mm -hmm. So there's a mermaid named Sophie. She's goofy, and mm -hmm. he's um, kind of this simple, um, a little bit egotistical, but very simple and happy British-speaking mm -hmm. uh, penguin. And then we threw a furry red monster in there because anything you do with kids, you got a furry <laughs> monster, right? And these puppets come together with live actors and animation, and it's very high quality production to teach them these heavier philosophical concepts in ways that their brains can grasp. And we tested it, and it's amazing, Joy and Jim, what yeah. these kids can understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They right. get the arguments. Um, uh, and we can we can hit them with the best pro-choice arguments without talking about abortion. So by testing it, get it, you mean you've actually shown mm -hmm. the yes. videos and the programs, yeah. and you come back and give them a little test about what did this mean to you? Exactly. What did you get out of yeah. it? Yeah, and then so they're getting they, it, and they get it. So so we did it kind of like Sesame Street style. Right. So yeah. there mm -hmm. are um, several different episodes. They're twelve nine to twelve minutes long. Um, the first three episodes deal with the four levels of happiness. What is happiness, and how do you define that? And then the second three episodes deal with success and quality of life. <clears throat> and then the final episode, the last three episodes deal with contradictions. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that age old argument that you could be something and not something if you want, depending yeah. on what your opinion is. Yeah. And these kids, we tested it in classrooms with quantitative analysis. And these kids learn it. Mm -hmm. They remember it. They yeah. recall it. Um, they can apply it yeah. to, to to scenarios and different uh, situations, um, and it, it and they love it. Yeah. <clears throat> so well, it's just know, been it's, a lot of fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and really, you you move into another genre, you know, beyond didactic teaching. So you, you're speaking here the whole time. You're doing that. Minister mm -hmm. gets up. Priest gets up. He's speaking the whole time, and that's good. But when you add to it visual, you yes. add to it mm -hmm. art. Yes. The art. And that that and gets tangible. that yes. gets mm -hmm. in because I could stop yes. you when you're sharing didactically. I could think about something else. I could do whatever. But if you're showing me an image, good image or bad image, yeah. or something speaking to me, I can't stop that. That kind of like goes in to the register. That's what's That's happening right. with and these our, kids. And our pro-life movement has to make use of the best mm -hmm. pedagogical methodology out there, and that's what we try to do with this program. So you, you know, and this program can be used in a school. It can be used in a parish. It can be used by parents at home. And we're always getting letters by grandkid, grandparents saying, mm -hmm. "What can I, you know, what, how can you help my grandchild?" Mm -hmm. Well, this is something you can do with your grandkid mm -hmm. at home on your own. You don't have to be a philosophical whiz. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. don't have to understand these concepts in their depth. You just got to be able to run a video and talk to your kid about it. And so, you know, it's all free. Yeah. If you go to healingtheculture.com on our website, you can click on Philo and Sophie and you register and it's all free. You watch a little video with your child and then there's downloadable handouts. There's tangible games. There's mm -hmm. exercises to do. There are take home pieces for parents if you're doing it in a parish mm -hmm. or in a school setting. And one of the examples we do, we talk about this Jim, you were really interested yeah. in the principle of non-contradiction when we were talking. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's that whole debate of can it be a baby and not a baby at the same time? Right. right. And we've got this one episode um, where we teach kids through song about contradictions. And the kids learn this song, and then they go home to sing it to their parents. And the parents are like, what are you teaching my child? <laughs> I didn't even know he could understand this stuff. I didn't even know what a contradiction was. And it's it's just so beautiful. This song, it's, it's like, um, imagine it was 8 o'clock but also it was nine. Mm. Can something be a curly cue, but also a straight line? And these kids are like, no, it no, can't it be can't both be. at the same time, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So they get that. So we, we have this just wonderful episode, and then we conclude it where uh, Frank, this furry monster, because you don't want to corrupt the kids by talking about abortion. How do you apply this, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're talking about it's a baby and not a baby at the same time. Yeah. That's what our opponents are always trying to say. Mm -hmm. So we introduce this to kids where we have at the last sketch, Frank comes into a room and he encounters this woman who's pregnant. We call this episode Katya. And Katya, this woman, is very pregnant. And he looks at her and he says, Katya, what did you eat for lunch? Your mm -hmm. stomach is huge, right? Mm -hmm. And she says, oh, that's not lunch, that's a baby. And he says, I hate to tell you this, but that's not a baby. You're eating too much for lunch. You should mm -hmm. do some exercise. Mm -hmm. They have this debate, and he just doesn't believe that it's really mm -hmm. a baby. So he says, I'll tell you what, since you don't believe me and I don't believe you, let's just say it's a baby for you, but for me it's lunch. Mm -hmm. And Sophie comes running in and says, that's a contradiction. And they get to have this whole dialogue that it can't be a baby and not a baby wow. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so. the kids 
get it. They understand that. Yeah. Later on, when they're introduced to that pro-choice argument in abortion, they'll know mm -hmm. you can't do that. It's illogical. Right. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah, I must admit, when I first saw Philo and Sophie, that particular you know, page on the Healing the Culture, that site, and it says, you know, philosophy for kids or philosophy mm -hmm. for And really, even me, I said, like, you know, wow, that's really heavy. I mean, yeah. really? You're going to do philosophy for kids? <laughs> like, how is that going to? But I, I do see how that's taking yeah. place and how it can happen because it's, it's true. And if it's true, mm -hmm. then it's there for kids. It's got to be a way kids? to communicate. And we under we underestimate we children. Do. Like I was mm -hmm. saying, you know, you give these kids a, a, a smartphone, you know, right. they're fine. They it out. We don't know oh, what to yeah, do. They figure so, it out. But we're afraid to, to share a philosophical children truth. Children are absorbing the philosophy of our culture right now mm -hmm. yeah. without you even noticing it. Mm -hmm. right. Sure and they if, are. If we can't introduce better philosophy for them to replace it with right now, it's going to take root. Bad philosophy will take root. We mm -hmm. have to counter it with good philosophy. And what does philosophy mean? Right? It simply means love of wisdom. Yes. We're teaching them to be wise when they're very little. And you shouldn't underestimate them. Most parents can see my kid. You know, most parents think their kid is the smartest kid in the world anyway, right? right. Mm -hmm. They can get these concepts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I, I do, since I like it so much now yes. that I've learned it more thoroughly, uh, this spirit of, not spirit, principle of non-contradiction. Something cannot both be mm -hmm. and not be in the same place at the same time and in the same respect. Right. Okay, so that's that's a lot of words there, and you got into it a little bit with how you're teaching it to the children. But I think this is absolutely critical for the discourse that's taking right. place within the church and even outside of the church, mostly about you know what I think is rea mm -hmm. reality is reality. What I think is truth is truth. You even have the Supreme Court in the Casey case saying that each one of us have this way of thinking, and we need to be able to mm -hmm. fit in to the realities we face regarding abortion, to what that person believes about it. it has to fit what I believe you create your, your realm right. of, mm -hmm. of knowing and so this is into uh, abortion as you said youth, euthanasia assisted suicide gender identity mm -hmm. so so share share it yes share it again. We, we have a little episode um, it's called square circle and it's mm -hmm. about a circle named Miguel it's done by animation and he wants to be a square because squares are so much more exciting. And so he tries to put on square pants and square shoes and he eats square shaped food only and he just can't, he's a circle. Yeah. You know, you can't live a contradiction. And so this figure, his, the artist who created him, which takes the place of God, you know, mm -hmm. um, kind of showing us who God is, tells him you're trying to live a contradiction and contradictions don't work. You have to be who you are and love who you are. So it even gets into some of the transgender, mm -hmm. well, unintentionally, you know, we were trying right. to just teach this principle of non-contradiction, but it can really help parents who, or grandparents who need help explaining to young people how, you know, you can't live this contradiction without being profoundly unhappy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, you use it in the adult teaching, uh, let's agree to disagree regarding abortion, regarding life. And you say, well, we just can't do that yeah. because... Why not? It's illogical. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Contradictions don't work. Right? You can't even have a relationship if you say contradictions are allowed because I can't talk to you because everything I say, the opposite's also true. Mm -hmm. And we also, you know, we, we really get into those four levels of happiness because people will make the argument on abortion, um, you know, it's a very contradictory argument that happiness is whatever you want it to be. So, you know, happiness might be one thing for you and something for somebody else. So we teach kids at a very young age, there are four different levels of happiness mm -hmm. and they're not all the same. And some of them will lead to profound unhappiness, but we do it in fun ways. Right. We, we have another episode, we call it um, Game Show. And we take Father Spitzer's four levels of happiness and we use Philo the Penguin is competing in, an, in a game show with right. two other life characters. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the characters is very level one and the other is very level two. And, and they have to say, which is the best level of happiness? And Philo keeps getting it right and the other team keep getting it wrong. And you can see the characters who are living for level one and two you can see the crisis in there, their mm -hmm. bitterness, their contempt of the other characters, their jealousy, mm -hmm. their self-hatred, their fear, their anxiety, their suspicion of each other. And meanwhile, Philo is just very happy and, and content and, and he yeah. knows what real happiness is and he's at peace. Mm -hmm. And the kids see that. Philo is the one who's at, who's at peace. I want to be like him. So it's a very fun and yes. energetic way yes. of getting young people to see and relate to the beauty of those higher levels of happiness and meaning in life. I'm going to take a break. There's so much to share about. You can get it all at healingtheculture.com, 
healingtheculture.com. Please go there after our show and check out all the information. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back, continuing our conversation with Camille Pauly, uh, Healing the Culture, healingtheculture.com. Let's share more about Philo and, and Sophie sure. and some particular episodes that you think are, are really, you know, meaning, well, I'm sure they're all meaningful, but really speak to the now and, and that people can access. Sure, well, in every one of the units, we have three units, and in every one of them, first we set up the philosophy and then we apply it to something pro-life. Um, and so we'll spend most of it talking about like the four levels of happiness and then pro-life. And there's this one episode in the kindergarten unit after we've talked about the four levels of happiness where we then take them into the whole idea of the beauty of the feminine woman's mm. body that can give birth. But we do it in a very simple, innocent way. So Sophie's visiting her doctor, right, her OBGYN. <laughs> and she's this silly little goofy peng uh, mermaid. Yeah. And you know, she, her doctor's asking her, do you eat seaweed? Are you eating all the four food groups and all this? And Sophie's saying, yeah, I do. And, and the doctor says, good, I'm glad because your body is special. Mm -hmm. and, and Sophie says, my body is special? Wow. And the mm -hmm. doctor says, yes, because one day you'll be able to have little baby mermaids. And Sophie's amazed and they talk about how the woman's role in the new creation of life is so important because her whole gift is self-sacrifice, yeah. which is what these kids have learned about now in this episode about those four levels of happiness, that what makes me happy is gift of self. So the doctor talks all about taking care of your body when you're pregnant, eating the right foods, avoiding certain activities, and how important and special that is. And that's the gift of being a woman and femininity, is that our whole purpose is giving ourselves for the good of others. And Sophie's just amazed by this. And then we even, through a little animation, bring up the story of St. Gianna Breda Mala mm -hmm. and how she gave mm -hmm. everything for her baby, <clears throat> even her own life. And the kids who watched this episode were dead silent through the whole thing. And then when it was done, they wanted to see it again. They wanted to see that, even the boys mm -hmm. wanted to see that episode again mm -hmm. because it speaks something so true in our hearts. We're made to sacrifice. We're made to give. We're made to be courageous. We're, we're made to love one another. Mm -hmm. And they were so moved by that. And they love to see the interaction with the puppets. But we can't be afraid, mm -hmm. even challenging little kids. We can't be afraid of sharing with them, this is who you are. And we do that in simple ways. Give that up for your sister. Give that up for someone else. Give mm -hmm. that up in the collection basket. Right. right. Don't always give Jesus the crumbs. Give him mm -hmm. the good stuff because mm -hmm. that's yeah. who you are. And that's kind of how we, we help parents do that. With their well, kids. we would be out of business in our crisis pregnancy center if people had that teaching. <laughs> no, I'm serious because it's a confusion yeah. of, of true femininity. It is. Confusion about love and responsibility. Right. Confusion about all of these, these matters. And if, if a woman knew that, a young lady knew that, she would not sacrifice that for this lust that mm -hmm. is really not she love, for this him. usury right. that is really mm -hmm. not love. Mm -hmm. and, and I think guys would understand, you know, to honor the feminine, but it, it is, you know, we work day after day, we see so many people, it's like whatever happened to femininity, mm -hmm. and they don't understand, and we only have a few minutes to share some things. Yeah. But, but what you're doing is saying this is who you are, this is what it means to be a woman, this is the grandeur of being a woman, it's not found in being a boy or a man or a competition, it's found in who you are. It's there. But, but it's got to be pulled out. It's got to be said and held before and them and kissed elevated. and put back mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Right. They can, just can't do that for themselves. And that's yeah. what parents are for. That's what the church is for. That's what healing the culture that's what is about. For. I would say that if there's one thing, one last thing that I want to leave your audience with, it's this. Be holy. Mm -hmm. Because when you are holy, your kids are going to see it reflected in you. They'll mm -hmm. see that you love life, that you're willing to sacrifice, that you're living for those higher levels of happiness, right? that you believe in these principles that we're teaching them, that the ends don't justify mm -hmm. the means, and, and that you have intrinsic dignity. We have to be holy. It's not just sharing with them. It's not just showing them a video or a curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's also having the courage to say, I got to live a holier life. And mm -hmm. it's hard. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm working on it every day. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But we have to mix all this education with our own quest for holiness because our kids are watching the videos 
but they're also watching us. Right. And they're watching what we do. Mm -hmm. Camille, thank you so much. Thank this time has been thank so you. rich. It's it been has. quite some time since you've been here. So we're glad you're here you and don't wait so long to come Go back ahead, and I be promise. with us. <laughs> Altogether, we'll build a new culture of life. Life will prevail. Marriage will prevail. Jesus Christ will prevail. Keep it on EWTN. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Bye now.